What's a vector space? It's just a set. It could include matrices, coordinates, polynomials. The point is, is that all of these sets, in order to be called a vector space, have to have the same 10 properties or axioms. Let's define u, v, and w to be three vectors in our vector space v. This e sign means is an element of or included in v. The first five rules or axioms relate to addition. A1, A for addition, is closedness. If we add u plus v together, we get another vector in our vector space. A2 is commutativity. This means that order doesn't matter. If you add u plus v, that's the exact same thing as doing v plus u. A3 is associativity. This means that brackets don't matter. If we have u plus v, and we add this sum to w, our third vector, that's the exact same thing as doing u plus the sum v plus w. Next, we have the zero vector. Now, the zero vector doesn't always have to be zero. It just has the property that the zero vector plus v is itself. So it does nothing. And of course, this zero vector has to be included in our space, v. And lastly, for addition, we have the negative vector. So for each vector that we have, let's take v for example, there exists a negative vector, an opposite, that when you add, for example, negative v to v, we get the zero vector. For these two axioms, it matters which order you go in, you first have to identify the zero vector, then you can identify the negative vector. And of course, this negative vector has to be included in our space. Now let's move on. We have five more properties relating to scalar multiplication, which just means multiplying by a number. A number is a scalar, so we'll call this A, which we'll say is any real number. The first property is again closedness. If we multiply A times V, product is still another vector, in v, our space. Next, we have distributivity of scalar multiplication. This means that if we have a sum, v plus w, we'll say, multiplied by a scalar, a, which is the same as doing a times v plus a times w. The third axiom is similar. It's distributivity of scalar addition. Okay, b is also a scalar. So if we have a plus b times a vector v, this is the same as doing a times v plus b times v. Last two, we have the associativity. So this means if you do a times bv, this is the same as doing first a times b and then multiplying this product by our vector v. And lastly, we have a unit element. This means that one times any vector arbitrary v equals v. One times the vector does nothing. And that concludes the 10 axioms. What are some examples, classical examples, of vector spaces that satisfy these 10 axioms? First of all, we have Rn. So a subspace within this would be R2. All vectors x, y, or equivalently x, y, if you want to write it as a row vector. Next, we have matrices that are m by n. So an example of this would be m, 2, 2, which would be a, b, c, d, this set of matrices. p is the set of all polynomials. Um, if you want to be more specific, a subspace within p is p, n, which means all polynomials with a degree at most n. So this is what it would look like. p of x equals, let's say, a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared plus all the way up till a n x n, where the a's are coefficients. The following sets are not vector spaces. And to prove this, we just need to find one axiom that fails. 
Now we could start at the top of the list and work our way through, but that would take a while. So let's just try and reason through it. For this first set V, I notice that there is a one. Y equals X plus one. I know that the zero vector in R2 is zero, zero which has the property if we add 0, 0 plus x, y, we get back x, y. What is the zero vector in this case? Can we generate it, is the question. So if we put x is 0, y is 1. If we put x is negative 1, y is 0, there's no possible way to generate this zero vector. So a4, the fourth axiom, fails. The zero vector is not included in v. It's not a vector space. In fact, all lines or planes that are vector spaces must pass through the origin in order to avoid this problem. Let's look at you. So we see that what's changing here is multiplication. So right away, I'm not even gonna look at addition because addition is normal addition. Multiplication is changing them. So the order of x and y switches when we, just, when we multiply x and y by a scalar. S5 states that there has to be a unit vector. So if we multiply one times xy, we get back xy. And you can see that it's not true. If we multiply one times xy because of this new rule, we'll get yx, which is not equal to xy. Therefore, S5 fails and it is not a vector space. In this next example, we see that all the functions in P3 have to pass through the point x is 2 and y is 2. Let's say that f and g are two functions that are included in w. So that means they have the property f of 2 equals 2 and g of 2 equals 2. Let's look at a1 closedness under addition. If we add f of 2 plus g of 2, what do we get? Of course, we get 4, right? Now, because these are functions, we can combine f plus g of 2. And this new function, f plus g, equals 4. So f plus g at the point 2 does not equal 2. Therefore, the function f plus g is not included in the set w. So it is not a vector space. We need to be able to add two vectors or in this case, two polynomials, and get another polynomial with the same property. Let's take a look at our last example. Z contains all two by two matrices that have the property that the matrix squared equals itself. So let's say that M is an element of Z. Let's take a look at S1, which is closedness under scalar multiplication. This means that A times m, where a is just a scalar, should be included in our set. Is this true? In this case, it's a matrix times a scalar squared equals itself, so a m. And is this always the case? Well, if we distribute the two in, we get a2 m squared equals a m. Now, m squared equals m is true, right? But a squared, meaning a is a scalar, doesn't always equal a. To prove this, we just need a concrete counterexample. The identity matrix has this property, right? So if we square it and we multiply these matrices, we get the identity matrix back. So the identity matrix is a part of this set z. Now let's multiply by a scalar. Let's say a equals 3. So 3 times the identity matrix equals 3, 0, 0, 3. What happens if we square this? Well, we'll get 3, 0, 0, 3 times 3, 0, 0, 3. And this is the same as 9, 0, 0, 9. Which clearly these are not the same. This could be rewritten as 9 times 1, 0, 0, 1. Because this property does not hold for A, and we have a specific example here, we can conclude that Z is not a vector space.